Thank you very much for keeping your time and even faster than um, than scheduled. Um, some questions. A general question: um, Do you know of any uh, any means by which you have a measure of the Indian grid inertia? Um, I am not aware of any um, any um, uh, study or uh, or the or, or from the Posoko or some other sources that there is any uh, um, uh, any me any uh, method or or uh, uh, um, approach in place that that monitors the inertia of the system. But there are countries who other country other than India who who monitor the inertia of the system, and um, some countries do also consider estimation of of the inertia. However, uh, I am not uh, aware of any such uh, um, this inertia monitoring uh, approach done by, uh, at the moment, done by uh, Indian TSO or uh, uh, other utility. But uh, I, I think it is also, uh, uh, we have to, we have talked about the context, in the context, India is, is a huge system and still it has a significant inertia. We have a lot of uh, conventional power plants still in, in place. So probably at the moment we have uh, uh, sufficient inertia uh, rotating mass in the system at the moment but down the line I think uh, we, we need to consider uh, uh, that uh, inertia in the system. Uh, I would like to request uh, Mr. KVS Baba to comment on, on uh, Indian inertia because I do not really believe that uh, this is possible that uh, nobody does anything. On this. No, no. Actually maybe people are not aware we are uploading our frequency response characteristics on a quarterly basis on our website, they can see there is a, I mean, any uh, event that has happened uh, causing more than 1000 megawatt dip or uh, sudden increase is being captured and uh, frequency response from all the generators on a regional system or a state system or individual so ISGS, we are being captured and are uh, being reported to CRC is being uploaded to our uh, website actually, you can see NLDC website. And uh, it comes to around uh, 8,000 to 10,000 megawatt is the, now is the FRC. I think the question was about monitoring the inertia of the system. So I'm not see sure the, if we... See the monitoring means, ah. see any event that happens immediately it is being captured and it is being me measured. Uh, monitoring, you see inertia is not something you mean, uh, which you will monitor uh, on a day-to-day uh, -day basis, you want to say? Yeah, I mean, real time. There are, I mean, some countries who are talking of real-time monitoring of the inertia. Probably that question was uh, uh, related to that. I, I, that's what I was trying to say. I don't think we have so some sort of that uh, in place in India. Okay. So this uh, calculation of under-frequency schemes and uh, rock off in India uh, has uh, calculated all the inertia number of machines which are on bar and their H values, omega d square, mm. all are calculated. But of course, as you said, this, there is a lot of other things which we can do. I have a question to the panelists, actually, to the presenters. I've seen on many presentations in this session these dotted lines, uh, which was named available power. Could you say a few words how to calculate this available power for wind and PV? and uh, also how accurate this calculation is. I don't know who would like to answer. Yeah. Uh, perhaps um, uh, the, the available power uh, depends a lot on uh, the weather conditions. And uh, um, of course, uh, it is, um, uh, you, you measure, for, for example, the irradiation on a plant with a certain tolerance. And uh, uh, to, uh, it depends on not only on the weather condition, but on the soiling too, for example. But um, uh, at last, uh, when uh, you, you measure the available power at uh, different locations, the so tolerances uh, uh, decreases more and more, and you have uh, something like uh, stati statistical um, uh, balance. Yeah, you mean the portfolio effect? Um, that is definitely true. Um, the other possibility regarding PV is that you leave some uh, inverters uncontrolled, and 
have uh, a part of the PV part uh, produce power um, yeah, like, like uncontrolled and use the other to provide control reserve power. Um, on and on on the wind side, um, we had several research projects where we um, calculated this available uh, power. Um, the first uh, tries were with the animometer on the on the turbine, and it was very imprecise. And uh, now the manufacturer. Come, uh, came to the mechanism that they used the the pitch angle and the actual power feed in, uh, even if uh, in a control case from the wind turbines, and this is uh, much much more precise um, due to the fact uh, that uh, if you curtail the wind farms down, it uh, always makes sense to let them run at at least three percent. Because uh, when you when you shut them totally to zero, then it takes too long to uh, reach capacity again. Um, we see uh, some curves when when you uh, let the wind turbine act on three percent of the capacity, then you are able to act really fast, so you can reach uh, capacity in good wind conditions in within uh, under thirty seconds. And if you shut down a wind farm totally to zero, this will take uh, several minutes. Okay. Um, you have a comment? Yeah. yeah. I, I just uh, wanted, uh, because both panel and particularly Dr. Jacqueline. I haven't read uh, Fair Order 824 and 823. We will get into the details. But the, as far as the power factor and the answer, uh, reactive power of uh, RE is concerned, uh, should it not be decoupled f uh, in terms of power factor and link it straight to the voltage uh, so that uh, you know it uh, helps the system uh, be it night or day uh, presently a lot of our re generators are ending up paying penalties whereas they are actually helping the voltage so if we relate it to the voltage it will becomes uh, almost uh, droop characteristics with voltage and works out fine with the tariff also so is there anything wrong in this fundamental thinking? Should we introduce it in our codes, delink it with power factor, or should we continue the way others are doing? What exactly is the thought process? I'm going to defer to others on the panel. I think they're better experts on that question. Maybe I can just uh, start with it. Uh, for uh, small wind turbines, uh, for I mean, uh, PVs, uh, uh, the, the one of the limitation that is seen with voltage control uh, could be that um, it it may exhaust its reactive power capability to in, in controlling the voltage at at the at the uh, distribution level because of its low uh, lower capability. But uh, as far as the large power plants are concerned, uh, I think there are countries where these wind farms, uh, which are connected at the transmission level, are required to have the capability of voltage control, but still. In in significant uh, uh, cases, it is like at power plant level, it is power factor control, while as uh, at the wind turbine level, within the wind form, which is connected to the transmission level, it is voltage control. So uh, there is there, there is the requirement of the, the capability of wind forms to have this voltage control. And I, I, I guess there are uh, there are also some cases where they are required to, uh, to control the voltage rather than simply power factor. So, but some for the small wind turbine, as I mentioned, it, uh, there is this limitation of of uh, exhausting the uh, reactive power capability. So it's now 50 minutes over the time. The next session should start very soon. Uh, I would like to thank all the presenters again, and uh, would like to close the session. Thank you.